By the end of this video, you're going to be feeling much more comfortable with the quadratic formula. We'll be going through three problems in this video, and of course, they'll be getting harder as we go. And since you guys love when I do this so much, the notes for this video, the printable notes, of course, are linked right in the description. So our first quadratic is 2x squared minus 3x minus 5 is equal to 0. Now, you can already see for this quadratic that the x squared is not by itself. It's got that 2 in front of it. And so that means we're not going to be able to factor like normal here. And you can also check while you're at it, we're not going to be able to separate that 2 from the x squared because if we try to divide by 2 on both sides to get that 2 away from the x squared, well, then we've got other terms that wind up as fractions, right? This negative 3 is not divisible by 2 and negative 5 is not divisible by 2. And so we end up with fractions and we definitely don't want to deal with that when trying to solve a quadratic. And so there's a few things that we can do here. We can try to factor by grouping, but factoring by grouping doesn't always work. Something that does always work is the quadratic formula, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Now, the quadratic formula is this guy right here. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, what are a, b, and c? Well, those come from the standard form of a quadratic. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So a, b, and c are just your coefficients on each term. So what are my a, b, and c in this quadratic? Well, a, that's the number on x squared. That would be a 2 here. So I can write that a is equal to 2. b is the number on x, and that is negative 3 here. That's the number on x. And lastly, c is the number without the x. And negative 5 does not have an x on it. That is our c. And so now that we have our a, b, and c, we can plug into the quadratic formula. So plugging into the quadratic formula, we get that x is equal to a negative b, and b is negative 3. So negative b would be a negative negative 3. And that'll be plus or minus the square root of, and then we'll get to that in a second. But what I do want you to understand here is that there is two negatives, right? There's not just one. A lot of people make the mistake of only putting one of those negatives. This negative here comes from the negative in the formula. But this negative here comes from the fact that b is negative. So we have to take those both into account. And so that's how we end up with the double negative there. Now we're going to have plus or minus the square root of b squared. Well, b is negative 3, so that's going to be a negative 3 squared. And then we have minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 5. And that's all going to be over 2a. And a is 2, so that's 2 times 2. Great, so we get that part done. And now we just have to simplify here, and that's gonna allow us to get our answer. So we get that x is equal to, well, we have two negatives here, so that makes a positive. So we have just a three plus or minus the square root of, let's simplify what's under the square root. We've got a negative three squared, and that's a positive nine. And then we've got a negative four times eight, that's negative eight, times negative five is a positive 40. So that's what we'll go right here. And then in the denominator, we have a 2 times 2, and that's just 4. So let's add those two pieces under the square root now. We get that x is equal to 3, plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 40 is 49, and that's over 4. So we know the square root of 49, that is something nice, right? The square root of 49 is 7, and so we'll actually get the square root to completely go away here. And now we almost have our answer. So first I'll deal with the plus part of the plus or minus. I get that x is equal to, I'll have a three plus seven, and that's 10. So I'll have a 10 in the numerator, and we have a four in the denominator. So that's gonna be one of my x's. And the other x is going to come from the minus part of the plus or minus. So I'm going to have a three minus seven over four. So three minus seven, that's negative four. And again, that's divided by four. And so now from here, we can simplify each of these. Now, 10 over 4, what I can do with that is I can divide by 2 on top and bottom. And what that'll give me is that x is equal to 10 divided by 2 is 5, and then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I get that x is equal to 5 halves. That's one of my solutions. Now, you can think of the second one, this negative 4 over 4. You can think about that as you know dividing by 4 on top and bottom. That's completely fine. But the way that I'm going to look at it is I have a negative 4 divided by 4. I know that's negative 1. 
So that's another way that you can see it, and that way might be even faster for you. So that's my second solution for this quadratic. Okay. So this problem was really nice because that square root completely went away. You saw here that we had that square root of 49. We were just able to make that seven, and well, that was the end of the square root. However, in some of these problems that we're going to do, like in the next problem, the square root won't entirely go away. And so we'll have to do some simplifying of square roots and deal with that stuff. So here's the next problem. Now our next problem is x squared minus four x is equal to 14. And before we do anything here, we need to get everything on one side, right? When we're solving a quadratic equation, we want the entire quadratic on one side and a zero on the other. And also only then would we even be able to use the quadratic formula. So we're going to try to get this 14 onto the left-hand side. And we can do that by subtracting 14 on both sides. And when we do that, we're going to get that x squared minus four x minus 14 is equal to zero. Now, right away, you can see that this is a quadratic where the x squared is by itself. And so your first thought should be to factor like normal. So let's see if we can do that here. Let's see if we can find two numbers that add to be negative four and multiply to be negative 14. So try to think about that in your head real quick. And uh, if you can't come up with those two numbers, you're not alone because nobody's going to be able to, right? Those two numbers, they're not going to be anything nice. And so if you can't find those two numbers that add to be this and multiply to be that, your next step should be the quadratic formula. So let's do that right now. Again, the quadratic formula is this giant thing right here. And the first thing that we need to do is identify our a, b, and c. Now, a, that's going to be the number on x squared. And there, you don't see a number there. You can just think about that as being a one, one times x squared. And so a is going to equal one here. b, that's the number on x. And here that's negative four. And lastly, c is the number without the x. And here that's negative 14. And so now that we have a, b, and c, let's plug into the quadratic formula. So we're going to get that x is equal to a negative b and b is negative four. So again, you wind up with those two negatives. And that's gonna be plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's a negative four squared. And that's minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is negative 14. And that is all over two times a and a is one, so that's a two times one. So now that we've finished all the plugging in, it's time to simplify. So when we start simplifying here, we have a negative negative four, and that's a positive four. And that's gonna be plus or minus the square root of a negative four squared, that's a positive 16. And then from there, uh, the times one, that's not gonna do anything. So really, we have a negative four times negative 14. And since, uh, well, first off, I know that's a positive number because I have two negatives there. And then 14 times four, I can think about that as 14 times two, which is 28 times another two, which is 56. You don't have to do that in your head, but I think it's fun too. It also keeps me entertained while I'm recording these videos. But in the denominator here, we have a two times one, and that's two. So now let's add those two numbers under the square root. Doing that, we're going to get that x is equal to four plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 56, that is 72. And that's over two. And so now, well, it's not like, you know, it's not as nice as the last problem. In the last problem, we had the square root of 49. Immediately, we knew that was seven. But here we have the square root of 72, which is nothing nice. 72 is not a perfect square. So let's see if we can simplify this square root. And if we can't, then we're done. The square root of 72 can actually be simplified. And there's two different ways that I can show you to simplify this. There's one way that is a lot faster, but harder to see. And there's a way that's slower, but much easier to do. If you want the fastest way to simplify the square root of 72, then what you need to do is take out the largest perfect square. So the largest perfect square that goes into 72 is actually 36. And so we can rewrite the square root of 72 as the square root of 36 times the square root of two. And that's because 36 times two is 72. Now I called 36 a perfect square. And that's because when you take the square root of it, you get something nice. We know that the square root of 36 is just six. And so the square root of 72, we can write as six times the square root of two. 
And that's the faster way of simplifying this square root. Now, this is a little bit harder to see though. You might not immediately be able to see that you can take out a 36 from 72. And so here is a slower way of doing things, but it's definitely easier to see how to get from step to step. So another way that we could have simplified this square root is we could have taken out smaller perfect squares. So we could have started with a square root of four and saw if a square root of four goes into the square root of 72. And it actually does here. Four times 18 is 72. And from there we know, of course, the square root of four, that's two. So let's see if we can simplify the square root of 18 now. And yeah, we can. We can actually take out a nine from that, another perfect square. So nine times two, that's 18. And we know that the square root of nine is three. And so we get that the square root of 72 is equal to two times three, that's six times rad two. So again, that's another way of seeing that the square root of 72 is equal to six times the square root of two. And so while this method doesn't look as clean, it's definitely a lot easier if you're having trouble seeing what largest perfect square goes into a number. So we know that the square root of 72 now is six times the square root of two, and that's what we're going to be plugging in in our next step. So we get that x is equal to four plus or minus the square root of 72 we said was six times the square root of two. And that's all over two. And we could try to call this done here, but there's one more thing that we can do here. You can see that every single term here is a multiple of two. And so we can simplify this by dividing by two on top and bottom. And when we do that, we get that x is equal to a four divided by two is two. And that's gonna be plus or minus a six divided by two is three. So this is going to be a three times the square root of two. And then in the denominator, we have a two divided by two and that's one, but we don't really need to care about a one in the denominator. So we can actually write our final answer as two plus or minus three rad two. And that is the answer for problem two. So that is an example where we have to simplify what's under the square root, but sometimes we'll end up with a negative under the square root. And that's what we're gonna end up dealing with in this next problem. So problem three says two x squared minus seven x plus 12 is equal to zero. Again, you can see that the x squared is not by itself here. So we're not gonna be able to factor like normal. And well, we have this negative seven, that's not divisible by two. So it's not gonna be clean to try to separate the two from the x squared by dividing by two on both sides. So at this point, again, you can you know, try factoring by grouping, but here we're gonna try the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula, what's nice about that is we always know that it will work. So let's identify what A, B, and C are. I'll write my A, B, and C. A is the number on X squared, so that's gonna be a two. B is the number on X, that's negative seven. And C is the number without an X, that's 12. So now let's go and plug that a, b, and c into the quadratic formula. And when we do that, we get that x is equal to, we have a negative b and b is negative seven. So once more, we end up with that double negative. Now this is gonna be plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is a negative seven squared. And that's going to be minus a four times a, which is two, times c, which is 12 and that's all over two times a, and a is two, so that's two times two. Okay, so let's keep going here. Let's try to simplify. We have a negative negative seven, that's a positive seven. And then we have the square root of negative seven squared, that's a positive 49. And then we have a minus four times two, that's negative eight. And negative eight times 12 is actually a negative 96. So we'll write that out. And then in the denominator, we have two times two, that's four. Now let's subtract those two numbers underneath the square root. Doing that, we're going to get that x is equal to seven, plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 96 is negative 47. And that's all over four. And so you can see here that we have a negative under the square root. And well, we can't have a negative under the square root. And since you can't have a negative under the square root, what we write as our answer here is that there's no real solutions. And so that's what you're going to write here. No real solutions. 
Now eventually, in like Algebra 2 and Precalc, you're going to learn about imaginary numbers, and that'll allow you to go further with the solution and deal with negatives under the square root. And I'll have a whole video where I go through that. That'll be a video on complex roots. But for now, we're good with our answer of no real solutions. So that's going to do it for this problem. And if you feel pretty comfortable with quadratic formula now, then uh, here's a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. Here we have x squared minus 6x plus 3 is equal to 0. Now you should see right away that the x squared is by itself here. So your first thought should be to see if you can factor this. Can you find two numbers that add to be negative 6 and multiply to be 3? If not, then try to use the quadratic formula. So try this out. Let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Now, if you have a quiz or a test coming up on the quadratic formula and you want to go through some more problems with me, I have an extra video linked in the description where you and I will go through and solve 12 more of these problems. Again, that video is linked in the description and I'll also include a link where you can get all the extra videos for all the topics I cover in algebra. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video and I'll see you soon.